Well, I'd like to thank Pastor Bryant, Pastor Marco, and my parents for really teaching me the ways of God. Because if I'm going to say something, for my dad, in his home, we serve the Lord. 100%. And this, and this is the result of him serving the Lord. He led by example. And I just want to thank, I want to thank all of you guys. But I also want to just say that I know that some of us here are here to kind of check off that box so that, though, yeah, we went, to serve, we went to church this year. But I want to say that I'm happy you're here. God is happy you're here because you know why? You are here for a purpose. God only needs one time, only one time for you to experience his presence and he will change your life forever. You know why? Because he did it with me. Let's get into this word. <laughs> Every year we celebrate Christmas. We decorate our home. We buy gifts. We throw parties. We go to church. We play all of our favorite Christmas music. We watch our favorite Christmas movies, and we visit family and friends. It's all good stuff, right? But one thing is that for some of us, it's not like that. For some of us, especially parents, we are, you guys are filled with this overwhelming pressure to provide. And I want to tell you guys that that is not what Christmas is about. You guys don't need to be filled with stress. You guys don't need to be filled with anxiety. You know why? Because God is the reason for Christmas. Whatever your experience is in this Christmas season, it's not about that at all. It's about Jesus. Now, let's start from the beginning. Before Jesus was born, Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 9 verse 6. Pretty sure you guys have heard this a lot tonight. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Then later we see in, cha in, in Luke chapter 1 verse 30 through 35, the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary saying, Mary, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. See See, you are to become a mother and have a son. You are to give him the name Jesus. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come to you. The power of the Most High will cover you. And the holy child you will give birth to will be called the Son of God. And in Luke 2, verse 10 through 11, it tells that the very night Jesus was born, an angel came uh, an angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds and said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. To all people. The Savior, the Rescuer, the Redeemer. Yes, Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. The Lord, Master, and Ruler has been born today in Bethlehem in the city of David. Now, this is all great stuff, right? But here's the thing. Why, why, why did he come? Why, why, why do we need him? I'll tell you why. <laughs> Jesus came to save us from our sins. In Matthew 1 verse 21 it says, And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from her sins. Understand that each and every one of us are someone and needs saving. All of us need saving. And that savior is Jesus Christ. Now, why do we need to be saved from our sins? Why can't we just live our everyday life doing whatever we want? Because for a fact, the consequence for one sin, one sin is death. In Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So, like you can say, Oh, I'm a good person. I, 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 I go to church every, every Sunday. You know, I do this. But do you have a relationship with him? Do you know him like how he knows you? Or is he your other half? Is he your identity? And I want all of you guys to know when you really make God your identity... Everything else that you had as your identity in the past will go away. The fact that that you're that you're a, a transgender, that you uh, that you that your your identity is based on the medication that you take, 
will no longer have a stronghold over you. And I want you guys to know that we need Jesus because he's saving us from death. And death really means separation from God. Now, what does it mean to be separated from God? If God is everything good, that means you are separated from everything that is good. So the chair that you're sitting on, that's not, that's not in hell. I guarantee you that. The, 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 the breath that you're breathing, the, the, the fact that you're not in excruciating pain right now, that is of God. And now, understand that when you're with God, it means you have joy. It means you have peace. It means that you have love, that you have hope, that you have stability, especially in this time of Christmas. Because I feel like that's what a lot of us need. We need to be stable during this time. We need something to depend on. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus is someone you can depend on. He will never fail you. Now, do you know what Jesus actually did for us? He paid the price for our sins by dying on the cross. In Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I love this verse and I love that they said it in worship because it says, in that while we were still sinners. In that while we didn't deserve it. In that while we did nothing for his love, he still gave it to us. And that we might have ran away from him. We might have shut the door on him. In fact, we might have spit on his face. Yet he still loves us and he's still waiting there for us. Because God is a gracious and merciful God. Now... Do you know that God wants to give us a gift? That gift is better than any Christmas present you could ever buy. You know why? Because it's eternal. It doesn't fade away like this money that we so desperately worship. And now, I would like to tell you that the gift is eternal life and a relationship with him. Understand that with God, eternal life is a gift that keeps on giving. Because you, you get eternal life, you get a relationship with him, and you get the benefits of having a relationship with him. And some of us, that could just be basic stuff, like a peace of mind. And now, I want to read you two last scriptures. John 3.16, for God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whoever believes and trusts in him as their savior shall not perish but have eternal life. Understand that God is not just your savior, but he is your father. He is going to be there for you no matter what. No matter what you do, he will always love you. You know why? Because he has the one thing that we also desperately want, and that is unconditional love. And now, in Romans 5, verse 10, it says, If the death of his son restored our relationship with God, while we are still his enemies, we are even more certain that because of this restored relationship, the life of his son will save us. Jesus died so that we could have reconciliation with the Father. Jesus died so that we can have a relationship with the Father. And I really want to encourage you guys to have that relationship because it will be the best choice you ever make in your life. Because when you do that, I guarantee you those voices in your head, that, 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 the, the drug addiction that you have, the alcohol addiction that you have, the, the, the disunity in your home that you have, the violence in your neighborhood that you have, the voices in your head, they will stop.
because God reached out his hand and you took it. Thank you. God is so good. You know, we're, we're witnesses of what God is doing. And our part is to testify of what God has done. You know, we have children and teenagers who are saying, I don't want anything else anymore. I just want Jesus. I know what my parents did. I know what my uncles did. I know what my siblings did. I just want Jesus. I want everybody to stand up right now. We're going to end. And we've all witnessed something amazing. And you might have a child that you're saying, man, I wish, I wish they were up there. You might have a teenager that says, I, I wish they were here. You know, I was praying in it. And I said, God, what, what do you want me to tell them? And I felt like he showed me dads saying, I'm going to take ownership of my family. And I saw fathers grabbing their children's arms and saying, we're going to go down to the altar. I saw mothers saying, no, 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 no. No more. Come on. Come on, mijo. Come on, mija. Let's go. Come with me. No, Why? Because we're going to give our life to Jesus today. I saw parents reunited tonight. I saw families right here at the altar together hugging and crying and saying, we're doing this together. No more division in our home. No more hiding in our rooms at dinner time. But we're going to read the Bible together. And I know I'm talking to you. And there's someone here when I count to three. I want you to grab your children's arms or the person you came with and say, right now, this is our time. We've had moments and opportunities we might have skipped. Or maybe you've come here for the very first time and you see something different than you've probably ever seen before. You know, I came to the Wayworld Outreach eight years ago. I didn't believe God was real. I was an atheist. I had so much rejection inside of me. I drank six days a week to the point where I would just fall down in my throw up. I was searching for everything in a relationship. And I came to church and I heard the message from Pastor Marco. And it hit me in a, in a way that I've never been hit before. In a way that I don't care if you're the most macho man in the world. The love of God will bring you to your knees. And today is that day. I want to tell you today is that day. It's time. Tell your neighbor, it's time. It's time. It's time. I'm going to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. To do what I did. To do what... All of these leaders have done is bring their mess and their brokenness and their shame and they brought it to the altar and they said what was in my seat I'm leaving and I'm walking down to that altar and I'm removing that shame off of my life but not by my power but by the power of God so on the count of three are you ready you're gonna raise your hand because you're gonna make a decision to follow God one God's calling out to you. You feel him right now, right? You feel the Holy Spirit inside of you too. On the count of three, this is for you. Three, raise your hands in the air if you're making that decision to follow Jesus today. I know there's families out there. There's fathers out there. I see everybody in the back. They're calling out. They're saying, son, daughter, come down. See, there's already people coming down to this altar. And all I want you to do, if you rose your hands, I want you to come down here. Stand in front of these leaders and we're gonna get, we're gonna give you prayer. We're gonna believe with you that today will be a day of change. 
that today will be a day where you will celebrate Christmas differently than you've ever done before. There's gonna be no more arguing on Christmas Day. You're gonna sit down your children and say, this is the story of why we celebrate today. I know the Christmas gifts were good. I know when you got your PlayStation 5. I know you got what you think you wanted, but this is what you really need. I'm so proud of every single one of you right now. There's a lot of teenagers down here. There's a lot of parents, a lot of fathers, a lot of families. But I believe there's still more people out there. I believe there's families in their seats and fathers in their seats. And I want to talk to the men of the home right now. I'm blessed to have two children. And I had to realize maybe I wasn't taught how to be a man of God. I wasn't taught how to leave, lead a home. I wasn't taught how to do the things the way that Jesus would ta teach me how to do. And I had to say it ends with me. That generational curse ends with me. I'm not going to wind up in prison. My son isn't going to live without his father. I'm going to serve my family. I'm going to lead my family. My sons and my daughters, they will see me worship Jesus. So again, I want to ask you out there to the fathers, to the mothers who need God so desperately in your life. On the count of three, I want you to raise your hand because you know you need to be down here. One, two, three, raise your hand if you believe you still need to be down here. Awesome, I see families raising their hands right there. I see men raising their hand back there. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I want you to come right down here. Sit at this altar. Bring whatever mess you thought was too big for God and leave it here. Lead your families. Lead your children to their breakthrough. So right now, I'm, I'm so proud of each and every one of you. I was in this place too, broken and hurt and angry. And I said, God, I, I, I need you so bad. Awesome, there's families coming down right now. There's more families right over here. I'm telling you, I believe Christmas will be different this year. We just saw children, teenagers, this amazing worship team led by teens. You know tonight was special, so let's all raise up our hands. God is ready to give you this gift today. He's just saying, are you ready for it? So repeat after me, say, Jesus, today, I now know the true meaning of Christmas. Today, I choose to walk away from everything for you. Today, I forgive every single person who hurt me. Forgive me, God, for all of my sins. I choose life but you are life. I choose the way, and you are that way. And today, I receive you, and not just as my Savior, but as my Lord. If I died, I'd go to heaven. Today is a day of victory. Today is a day of reconciliation. Today is a day of glory. Today, take everything off of me. All of the pain, all of the anger, all of the unforgiveness, and give me you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Awesome. So proud of each and every one of you. If you're down here, we just want to get to know you. We want to pray with you. If you felt like you were at those seats and you still need some prayer, come down. We have many altar workers who want to speak to you. Friday, 
Let's be here in the house of God celebrating at 7 o'clock right here the birth of Jesus. Invite someone, someone who's never been to church, and say, this Christmas Eve, you're coming with me at 7 o'clock. Love you guys. Have an amazing day. We will see you this Friday, 7 p.m.